Good morning for those of you. Oh, thank you. You're awake. I put a show on for you, so you should be. Uh, my name is Stephanie Reed Meyer, and I am the director of youth ministry here at Christ United Methodist Church. And it is my privilege to be in worship with all of you this morning. We are going to conclude our sermon series on Sing Thy Grace this morning. Chad has preached on a few hymns over the past few weeks, and we are talking about ways that hymns are really, really important to us. But over time, maybe as we sing them more and more, the words have grown a little meaningless to us. So how can we reclaim that grace within these ancient hymns? That's where we will find ourselves today. We are going to begin by looking at Psalm 148. I'm also really talented, so I can hold a heavy Bible and a mic at the same time. Here we go. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven. Praise God on the heights. Praise God, all of you who are his messengers. Praise God, all of you who comprise his heavenly forces, angels. Sun and moon, praise God. All you bright stars, praise God. You highest heaven, praise God. Do the same, you waters that are above the sky. Let all of these praise the Lord's name. Because God gave the command and they were created. God set them in place always and forever. God made a law that will not be broken. The sun, the moon, the stars. This psalm is reminding them to praise. Surely they don't need this reminder. The sun sets and rises every day. Who is this reminder for? Let's continue reading. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all you ocean depths. Do the same fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy wind that does what God says. Do the same, you mountains, every single hill, fruit trees and every single cedar. Do the same, you animals, wild or tame, you creatures that creep along and you birds that fly. Weather, seasons, Mountains, hills, animals. Surely they don't need a reminder to praise the Lord. That's part of who they are. That's part of their existence, what they were created to be. Verse 11 and 12. Do the same, you kings of the earth, and every single person. You princes and every single ruler on earth. Do the same, you young men, young women too, you who are old together with you who are young. Ah, humans need reminding to praise. That's us. We were created to praise God. Yet oftentimes, we get a little sidetracked. There are bills that need to be paid. There's family drama. There are tasks that need to be accomplished. Oftentimes, our praising God comes later. It's not our first priority. This is what we're reminded of in this scripture. I can't help but read about all of these creatures and hills and trees and mountains and not think of the creation story. God placed these things on earth and called them good. Praising God. That's what we were created for. While each of these things have specific purposes, their ultimate purpose is to praise God. This psalm reminds us that this is our ultimate purpose as well. To praise the Lord. And as humans, we sometimes lose sight of that purpose. Today's hymn, if you haven't already guessed, 
is All Creatures of Our God and King. It was published as we know it in the early 1900s, but it was actually translated into English a little before that by an Anglican rector. However, this hymn's origin stretches back way earlier than the 1900s. We actually have to look back to the 11th century to learn about the origin of this hymn. Giovanni Francesco Bernardoni lived in the 10th and 11th century, forever and ever ago, really. He was raised by a wealthy family and throughout his childhood and early adulthood lived a life of privilege. However, he became very, very sick and began seeing visions of God calling him to serve the church, to help the church, to fix the church. Giovanni abandoned his rights. He left his family, and he lived as the poor out in the world. He became known as Francis of Assisi, or as we know him today, St. Francis of Assisi. He unintentionally created an order of friars who lived with little to no possessions. They served the world around them and sought to praise God in everything they did. St. Francis is relevant to us today for a few different reasons, the first of which is the passion St. Francis had for creation. There is a story that Francis once was in a field with hundreds of birds and actually preached to the birds that they should be thankful that God had blessed them with clothing, with feathers, and that God cared for them. St. Francis preached to birds. I like to think that he did so not only as a reminder for them, but just as much for himself, too. Francis believed that humans could not fully live their life praising God unless they were in harmony with all of creation. This is proven in the last years of St. Francis' life. He composed a poem called The Canticle of the Sun. It was inspired by Psalm 148 that we read together. A portion of this poem was translated in the early 1900s by an Anglican rector into English. And it's the song we will sing today, All Creatures of Our God and King. Let's turn back to Psalm 148. I left you on a cliffhanger and you didn't even know it. We have a few more verses left. Let all, let all, let all of these praise the Lord's name because only God's name is high over all. Only God's majesty is over earth and heaven. God raised the strength of God's people, the praise of all his faithful ones. That's the Israelites, the people who are close to him. Praise the Lord. With all of creation, we are called to praise God. But how do we go about doing such a thing? Sure, we praise God when we're here worshiping together. Maybe we praise God when we're at that spiritual high point in our lives. But how do we praise God every day with everything we do? especially when it's just kind of a -a run-of-the-mill type of day. St. Francis exemplified what it meant to live as one with creation. However, for those of us who aren't maybe super into animals or nature, how can we find harmony with creation and praise God? There are three ways we can praise God together. Recognize, thank, and bless. 
Professor White, an assistant professor at the Catholic Theological Union in Chicago, recently wrote a devotion about recognition. She asked her students in her classroom to look around and notice all of the red things around them. She'd give them some time and then ask them to close their eyes. As their eyes were closed, she asked them to recall the red things around the room to themselves. Then, as they kept their eyes closed, she would ask them to name all of the blue things in the classroom that they could remember. She writes, most often because they were so focused on the red, they missed all of the blue. She goes on to use this example in real life. When we focus on the negative around us, we tend to pay special attention to everything that goes wrong around us. We miss all the positive. Professor White hits this point home when she writes, what we focus on is what we give power to. What we focus on is what we give power to. The first step to finding harmony with creation is recognizing the good in the world, recognizing the beauty of creation, recognizing love surrounding each of us. We must be on the lookout. We can't just sit back and expect good things to just poof, magically appear. We have to take initiative. We have to recognize the beauty around us. When we begin to think about how we can praise God in our everyday lives, we must recognize God's presence around us. What we focus on is what we give power to. The sun, the moon, the mountain, the stars, the animals, they exist around us now. They invite us to follow their example of consistently praising God and looking for ways to incorporate a similar praise in our own lives. After we are able to recognize the good and positive in the world around us, we're often moved into a state of thanks. Gratitude and thankfulness come to us when we notice God's beauty in the world and we're moved to react because of it. Unfortunately, I take a lot of things for granted. I don't always notice the blessings that are standing right in front of me. I noticed this a few years ago when I was with two of my friends at a coffee shop. One of our friends was really, really struggling. She was going through some hard times. And as a friend, I'm more of a co-sympathizer. I find comfort in the silence and just presence. My other friend, however, is a fixer and likes to offer all the right answers. So to our struggling friend, she said, hey, Let's look at the good things around us. You woke up this morning. You're drinking a delicious cup of coffee. You're surrounded by two friends who love you deeply. As I recount that conversation, it moved me to be thankful, to look for little ways every single day where I could sigh thanks to God. It starts when I wake up in the morning. Thank you, God, for a new start to a new day. As I begin moving throughout my day, thank you, God, for this cup of oatmeal and this hot coffee. Thank you for the ability to have these. And as I continue through my day, Thank you, God, for blessing me with this job. Thank you for entrusting these students into my care. Once I began to incorporate these words of thanks into my every life, I found them spilling out in other ways. 
I would be walking across a crosswalk into a Texas Rangers baseball game, and I would thank the police officer who was stopping traffic. When we become aware of things in our lives, when we recognize great positive acts of goodness in our lives, we're moved into thanksgiving. We're moved into thanks. Even the early Christians, when they were at their lowest point, when they found themselves imprisoned and persecuted, they sighed thanks to God. Even in their terrible situations, they found thankfulness. When was the last time you thanked God that you stubbed your toe? Or you thanked the sun for shining or the trees for growing? By taking notice of nature, by having grateful hearts no matter the situation, we're able to be in harmony with creation and praise God together. Recognize, thanks, and finally, bless. Once we recognize the praising world around us and we're comfortable finding thanks for creation, then we can begin to bless the world around us. Praising God is more than being aware of why creation was made. It's more than being thankful that creation was made. We must do our part to praise God. We must praise God and bless the world around us. When was the last time you experienced a blessing? Maybe someone sneezed and you said, bless you. Maybe before you ate breakfast this morning, you prayed, bless this food into my body and my body into your service. We all are capable of blessing. And for some of you, that may feel super uncomfortable. You may think, huh, me? Bless people? Bless things? That's not something I can do, right? It is. It's something each of us can do. And those of us that are probably the most uncomfortable doing so are the ones who mean the most when a blessing comes forward. Barbara Brown Taylor, a Christian theologian, writes about blessing in her book, uh, An Altar into the World. This is a book I go back to time and time again when I think about prayer and blessing the world around us. She talks about when you're first practicing how to bless things. So if some of you were in that circle of uncomfortableness, she talks about imagining blessing a stick that you see as you're out for a walk. The first thing you must do is to consider the stick. Where did that stick come from? Who made the stick? Can you identify the tree that it fell off of? What's this stick's story? Was it broken off? Did it suffer a mishap on a windy, stormy evening? Contemplate the stick. She continues to challenge her readers to think about what purpose this stick served. She writes this. At the very least, the stick participated in the deep mystery of drawing water from the ground, defying the law of gravity to deliver moisture to its leaves. How does a stick do that? Especially one this size. Smell it. Is the scent of sap still there? There's no less than the artery of a tree that you are holding in your hand. Its tissue has come from the sun and from the earth. Put it back where you found it, and it'll turn back into earth again. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Will you say a blessing first? No one can hear you, so you can say whatever you'd like. Bless you, stick, for being you. Or, blessed are you, O oh stick, for turning dirt and sun into wood. Or, blessed are you, Lord God, 
for using this stick to stop me in my tracks. When we open ourselves up to the mystery of creation, even if it's something silly like a stick, we're able to recognize the beauty and find ourselves thankful. We're naturally moved to blessing. It doesn't have to be profound. It can be as simple as blessing a stick for doing its job or blessing God for the opportunity we were given to take notice. Barbara Brown Taylor concludes by saying, practice blessing something simply because it exists alongside you and find out what your mind does with that exercise. Bless. Recognize. Thanks. Bless. When we read our psalm passage earlier, the one that inspired our hymn, All Creatures, one verse really caught me off guard. I'm not sure if you noticed it, but it was the seventh verse. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all you ocean depths. Sea monsters. That's kind of a negative right there with all those beautiful positive things. When we begin to recognize, thanks, and bless creation around us, the evil of the world will still be there. The monsters and the pain and the hurt will still exist. We don't have a magic cure to dissolve them. Yet God and St. Francis recognize the importance of harmony. Our hymn doesn't say just a few creatures of our God and King. It says all, all creatures. As we recognize goodness in the world, as we center ourselves around thanks, as we bless the world around us, that harmony will creep into moments that society has told us are bad or evil or dark or negative. We may find ourselves blessing areas other people consider to be dumps, giving thanks to people who others might consider unworthy, blessing others, finding potential in someone that others may forget. As humans, we're called to praise the Lord. The sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the animals, they remind us to praise. They remind us to recognize, thanks, and bless. They remind us to find harmony in the world around us. Even the sea monsters are called to praise the Lord. Praising God has the power to transform we are invited to center ourselves on that promise, to recognize the beauty, to give thanks for creation, and to throw blessings around like confetti. Will you pray with me? Creator, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you. We thank you for the simple. We thank you for the complicated. We thank you for the harmony that surrounds each of us. As we continue on with our week, may we feel challenged to recognize you in every single moment. May we sigh breaths of thanks, and may we bless the world around us. Amen. Amen.